In this video, I want to talk about the election end game. Where is this all going? How is it going to come out? Now here there are three possibilities and it's helpful to think clearly through each of them. The first one is that we may suspect, but we are not able to prove in any convincing way that there is systematic cheating, not just episodic cheating, but systematic cheating. I want to be clear what these standards of proof are. If we're talking about these Dominion voter machines or voter machines of any sort, we don't have to prove that they were rigged or even the extent to which they were rigged. We merely have to prove that they can be rigged. Because think about it. If you are a judge and someone shows you a machine and goes, this is the machine that's counting the votes, it can be rigged. You would immediately lose confidence in the election. You would begin to suspect that the cheating is widespread and at the very least you would order investigation. So that alone would be a decisive piece of evidence that the machine is manipulable. But if we can't prove it, if we can't show it, then we have to accept that perhaps by the rules of the game, we lost. And what that means is that we shouldn't freak out. The country is not over. We have a very good chance of taking the house in the midterm. Midterms generally favor the party out of power. We already have a majority or will likely have a majority in the Senate. We can do a lot of block and tackle. There's no reason to give up. We have to fight harder and plan better and make our case better. Option number two is we have a decisive case. We have irrefutable evidence of systematic cheating, but the courts, including the Supreme Court, look the other way. This is a very troubling scenario because essentially the court will be ratifying not only an illegitimate election in this case, but paving the way for every future election to be illegitimate. Now, our temptation is going to be to be merely demoralized, but we shouldn't be demoralized. We should realize that we are in a very precarious situation. Essentially, we are a captive population living under a bogus majority that has rigged the rules in its favor. I think we're going to have to think creatively about how to respond to that. Do we take a page from Martin Luther King, massive civil disobedience? Do we begin secession movements in the various states? I don't just mean states seceding, I mean secession within states, in which, for example, California secedes from um, LA and San Francisco. These measures may seem uh, in illegitimate. Didn't we fight a civil war about this? But no, Lincoln made it very clear in the first inaugural that if the basic rights of citizens are being violated, they have a right to exit. Lincoln's point was, I haven't violated those rights. Show me where I violated people's basic constitutional rights. He hadn't. But if the Democrats do, it opens up a whole new can of worms. And then there's the third possibility, that we have decisive evidence of fraud and the court agrees. Now the left will go berserk, but we should be ready for it. Let them go berserk. They don't have a right by riots or storming the streets to overturn the result of a legal valid election. At that point, I think, if it comes to that and if they are totally out of control, Trump may simply have to declare a national emergency, an emergency that would be lawfully established in view of a Supreme Court decision validating his re-election, and then the insurrection would have to be put down, very much in the same way that Lincoln put down the insurrection of the Democrats in the South. These are in some ways, troubling, even terrifying scenarios, but I lay them out so that we don't respond in a freak out manner, but we think through the situation and respond accordingly.